everyone, and welcome to week two. That's right, week two of the What's Your Why series. I'm your host, T, and this is One Faith Radio. And today, we are having a very, very great conversation uh, with one of the one of the most humblest, the greatest pastors that I've met um, on this in this in this series. Um, his name is Pastor Quentin McCoy. Uh, he is actually it's funny you'll hear the story. He actually just stepped into his pastoral role back in February at the start of the coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> But, you know, he's doing a phenomenal job. Um, the church that he pastors is Seventh-day Pentecostal Church of the Living God in Brentwood, Maryland. So shout out to um, people that's up in Brentwood, Maryland. Shout out to that church. Um, if you are in the Maryland area uh, and you're looking for a church, definitely check them out. Check out what they're doing. Um, and, man, this conversation is just so uh, deep. It's so enriching. It's so great. Um, like I said, this conversation, a lot of the conversations that you're going to hear is our initial meeting. Um, between me and these great pastors and you know and you get to hear our hearts you get to hear you know what we're talking about what we're doing um all relating to what's your why we know what what's your why is for um and i'm sorry but i, I, <laughs> I repeated a lot of the same stories and a lot of these episodes and you're going to hear that a lot um my bad you know um his wife is part of the christian podcaster association and when i put the post out there initially she responded was like hey my husband is a pastor he would love to do this and i was excited to see that because not only is it it's, it's exciting to see you know the wife and husband in ministry together and doing their thing but i was excited to see that because um it's so great to see that there are so many great pastors and individuals and people that are out there that truly uh, want to help you push forward your vision and that's one of the things i want to show with this what's your wife series you know, there are so many great and dope individuals out there that want to help you, that wants to help you push your vision, help push your dreams, help, help push the things that you want to do in life. And as you'll see in this series, man, I've talked to 12 pastors. I've never talked to that many pastors in, in one setting, but I've talked to 12 pastors and every single pastor had something positive or something encouraging to say to help push me along uh, with my dream, with my goal, with my faith. So um, this is me and Pastor Quentin McCoy on One Faith Radio. Um, first and foremost, thank you for taking the time to speak with me again. Um, I'm extremely humble, honored, and privileged to, you know, have this opportunity to talk to you. Um, and I did send over the, the interview questions and everything just so that you can get, you know, acclimated to what I'll be doing and, and everything like that. Because I don't mm -hmm. want you guys to think that I'm, like, trying to come left field with anything. <laughs> no, 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 that's all right. I look for failure. So, I, yeah. uh, go ahead. No. No, I was just gonna say I, I appreciate um, you reaching out. I, my my wife was telling me um, she had she saw this and she said somebody might be contacting you. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> she's like she's like she's like yeah yeah you know we got because I, I think she's part of the um, Christian Podcast the, Association. Yeah yeah. So she went to the conference. She's all fired up about it, man. I'm telling you. And I awesome. I, I yeah I love I love the. Um, in the environment and, and that you guys created there and yeah I said, wow, that's so good you know that you guys can have your own place yeah things and yeah, yeah. It's, it's so awesome because i'm actually i actually just joined it um like maybe a couple weeks ago um yeah. and we had our first um kind of kickback or hangout uh mm -hmm. online hangout and it was a zoom meeting and it was pretty awesome like i asked i asked a question and it literally the just the amount of love and support that they you know showered me with it was like they bombarded me with a whole bunch of answers and everything i loved it i was like man i appreciate it because you know whenever you have questions about anything or whatever you, you you just i'm new to this whole podcasting thing everything all together yeah yeah it's like whenever i have questions it's like it's hard to try to find people that that can know the answer but the yeah. fact that you know it's an actual association with just christians who just yeah. love to do that kind <laughs> of stuff you know i think yeah. it's awesome because like i said they just bombarded me with a bunch of answers and you know a outpouring of love and as soon as the um, meeting was over one of the ladies gave me her number it was like hey call me i would love to learn more about your stuff and i'm and we talked for like a whole hour about wow. everything and i'm like good god <laughs> yeah. i just walked away just mind blown because i i just really love that type of stuff so right. um, yeah so and kind of that's what this whole interview kind of came off of the conversation that i had with me and her with me and um this lady um, her name is Meg in, um, in the CPA. And we were talking about um, a lot of things, but she asked me a question about 
um, what's your why? And of course, I know what my why is for the um, for the podcast and everything like that. Sorry, I'm just adjusting this. No, you good. But of course, I know what the what my why is for the podcast and everything. But it just made me think, like you know, we're in this season, this interesting season, where we have so much going on, and it's mm-hmm. like, you know, people are still trying to discover who they are. They're still trying to discover their why. Um, I know for me, I would really love to start my own business, but I just don't know what that is. <laughs> what that would yeah, look. Yeah. And so at the same time, it's like I, I understand that a lot of people are kind of in that same boat. They're trying to figure out what their why is with life. You know, it it may not be trying to start a business, but it may be, you know, what is my purpose in life? You know, what, what can I do in this season? Even though it may look like that, you know, we're in the final chapter of revelation, (laughs) but you know, we, (laughs) you know, people still want to know how can they be effective in this season? Yeah. Um, And that's pretty much where it came from. And so, all right. So um, just tell me a little bit about yourself and about um, your ministry. Um, yeah, you're doing okay. Oh, I I do have a question. Do you, do I need to go somewhere where it's like totally quiet, or is this okay? No, that's perfect. Okay, this perfect. Okay, all right. So um, so my my ministry is the Seventh Day Pentecostal Church of the Living God. I'm the pastor there. Uh, my bishop and overseer is Pastor Ira Beatty. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, Bishop Ira Beatty. And um, I was ordained as a deacon uh three years ago and um i've been and prior to that i've been working in the ministry um a total of 25 years uh since being saved filled with the holy ghost Hmm. um i have been just working hard in the ministry from i i like to i tell my wife because I have just to back up. My father was a, a preacher. I'm a PK, you know, um, and we grew up with my mom and dad, eight kids, you know, so big family. Um, and uh, he was an assistant pastor at the church that I'm a pastor at uh, right now. Um, so he is he he passed away in 2007. Hmm. But we have all stayed at the church like the, the family is still there. Um, uh, we've, uh, it, except for I've got two, I got one sibling that's out of uh, the area. Mm-hmm. So um, when he's in town, you know, but, you know, we've been, we've been really, uh, boy, we grew up there. That That's it, for a long period of time. It was all I knew. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I did praise and worship there. I played there, the, the uh, key, the keys. I was, you know, I was, Going with the other ministers when they were going to preach at places. I mean, I've I've done the whole <laughs> gamut. I know, you know how to, how to stand, when to walk in, when to walk out, how to you know. Um, so it, it's just been a whole in whole twenty five years. Um, so um, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, um, and that happened in in uh, twenty. Uh, excuse me, night. Uh, 1995 <laughs> i was baptized uh 96 i was filled with the holy ghost i won't uh, even tell you how old i was at that time for, for <laughs> and, and, uh, I, I know man i'm telling you I, I look back now and i'm like wow oh my god that was so long ago and, and i've been saved of the holy ghost longer than i i've been unsaved you know in my right. life um and it's just it, it's been a, a blessing every step of the way uh, I had I've had trials, tribulations, um, and um, I've had to fight, you know, and in in prayer and warfare. So yeah. it, it's not like it, it's been easy. Yeah. Um, so it's been it's been a, a journey, and that's that's pretty much the the end to end. I'm I'm trying to summarize, but it, there's a lot in between. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, I just became the uh, the pastor of the church. <clears throat> And they're working on uh, a church in Jersey, so wow. um, we're we're trying to expand the ministry. Um, it, it, I came, I became the pastor uh, in February. Oh wow! Right before like, everything went down. Twenty ninth, exactly. <laughs> and then, bam! Everything just all, all hell, <laughs> literally, literally. Yeah. And and um, we we had to transition online. We had to 
do advertisement, do get uh, a pull together a social media team. Um, and we had to just, it, it was like seamless. Um, yeah. And I tell people, this is not me. Like God is just like, do this, do this, do this. And, and I just was just, just do it. <laughs> walking and doing it. And, yeah. um, and we, we just thank God we've been uh, really growing online like crazy. Um, and um, a lot of our, our, our church is really strong with teaching. Mm. Um, and so our teachings have been like really picking up uh, and, and people are actually, you know, contacting us directly. Hey, can, can we learn more about this? Can you come speak to us about this? Um, and I, I've got some really good teachers in our staff, on our staff that really know the word of God. Like, I mean, they know how to break it up, put it together, put, you know, get revelation on things. Uh -huh. Um, and it's, it's really, it, it's really been just amazing how God has been using us. Um, our church is focused on three main areas. So uh, spiritual growth, mm. fellowship, and community. So we use those three pillars and we build um, off of those, our ministries off of those. So all the ministries are involved in, in all those things. For instance, the men make sure that we have some fellowship going on, especially during this time where everybody's yeah. close in. Uh, we just pour in fellowship into to the brothers to make sure that they know we're here. Yeah. Uh, pouring into the community, finding opportunities to be a part of um, different uh, platforms and, and supporting, you know, as, as, as men, uh, we, we just put a call out, hey, there's a, there's a thing going on online, a Zoom class for men. That's all, we just, just you know. Flood to it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just flood to it. We, we tell our friends, anybody we know, you know, so we, we uh, do that. And then spiritual growth, we come together and pray once a week in the mornings uh, as men and, and, um, and then, and, and we also check up on each other spiritually. Hey, how you doing? You need prayer? What's your struggle? Are you okay over there? Cause yeah. people forget, you know, um, I know that I know everyone is, is going through, but, but the men are, we, it's a lot on us. Cause yeah. we don't, we have families, you know what I mean? In exactly. this time, we're trying to figure out, man, if something happened to my job, am I going to be able to feed, you know, the family is, is, you know, we're, we're, what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> it's never just about us. Right. Well, so um, it's right there on the, uh, I'm sorry. It's right no, you're there. Fine. <laughs> hey, you're a father first, I understand. <laughs> on, a shoe, on a shoe rack. Yeah, so, um, but, but yeah, so we do that. And then we, um, and then finally, so, so yeah, so those three areas, the community fellowship um, and spiritual growth we focus on. So it's, it's, it's been really good. We, we are, um, uh, like, a, we're a small church, you know, um and you know we've got under 100 members you know on a weekly basis and you know when there's something special going on they flood the church but right people we depend on you know and uh like i said we've been since um growing to a point where people are asking when we open up so we they can come in and you know we're like oh we're <laughs> not quite ready yet but right. <laughs> we'll get there we're um so so yeah, so we we really um it, it's been it's been a, a a really interesting ride these last couple of months. I bet. Yeah, I, bet. I did a teaching on James chapter three, we just talking about um you know keeping your tongue in check because mm -hmm. with everything that's going on, like you said, as men, we're going through a lot. We have a lot that's on our plate. If we lose our job, that's like losing our sanity. And so mm -hmm. if something happens, you know, we still got to keep in a check. You know, we still gotta you know you know have that same respect for our wives and our children in spite of everything that's going on out here. And yeah. I, you know, I understand it 100%. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, yes. That ministry and everything like that. So um, now I love the, the three pillars, the spiritual growth, fellowship, and community. Um, and also I, you know, I think that is like, that's powerful in and of itself. It's kind of like keeping God first and then everything else is kind of falling in, in line with it because without spiritual growth, you know, with spiritual growth, you know, you have to have that fellowship with, with your community or with the people who surround you in order to grow spiritually. Um, yeah. Read the Bible, you can study, you can pray, all that good stuff. But, you know, you really won't grow spiritually until you're acting on a lot of the things or the principles yes. that the Bible is saying until, yeah. you know, you're fellowshipping with other people. Yeah. So, I love that. Yeah, I really do. Um, now, you said that you just became pastor in February. Right before everything has came, you know. I literally had one week in the building. <laughs> after, 
after the week after I was ordained, one week. Wow. <laughs> <And> it, <laughs> the floodgates just. Floodgates. <laughs> Oh my God. Man, that's crazy. So I know like this has been very interesting and very different for you, um, yeah. especially given that, you know, you're stepping into this ministry um, yeah. fresh and we're what? We're about three, four months in since the pandemic has hit. Um, yeah. How has that challenge been for you to pastor during this season? Uh, it, it's, it's been, uh, um, honestly, for the most part, the people have made it really easy Good. Um, and they, they get it. They understand. So they have been working. I mean, I, I've asked for stuff and they're like, got it, got it. And as a matter of fact, we, um, what's helped most was before we went into uh, all this, before I was ordained, um, the Bishop, he said, Hey, look, um, and this is where, you know, someone is being led by God. He, mm -hmm. he said, look, I want you to go ahead and start establishing things. Mm. And this was, this was like December, um, mm -hmm. December, November, like around Thanksgiving. He said, look, I want to start next week. I want you to just start pushing your vision, start establishing things. And we're, we're here together. He's like, you know, we're here together, you know, and, and um, but I want you to get, start getting things together. And I'm like, well, okay. And um, I, I mean, I'm like, okay, I, I got my stuff, but you know, I didn't know it was this soon. So, we started <clears throat> doing some transition. I was able to start putting teams together, putting people together. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the one thing that we did that really, I think really helped was we had started a, in February, mm -hmm. month of February, we started a prayer challenge and we started studying uh, Matthew 6. Mm -hmm. when it's talking about um, when you pray, when you give, when you, when you fast. And we were, we were that, I mean, God just had me right there. When you pray, when you give, when you fast and the reward of the, the Lord that comes mm -hmm. from those things. And we started, we started studying that um, in February and we had like February starting the beginning of February, we had Monday night prayer, Monday, mm -hmm. like just Monday night prayer. And then what happened was um, we had people, more people coming out to prayer because we made like a challenge who could come out yeah. the most. So the, the church was literally in a state of prayer when this thing broke out and I had no idea that was going to happen. So, and, wow. and, and it was so heavy on us. Like when, when it broke out actually happened, we had got together and prayed on an off Monday. It was like, not Monday, it was uh, like Wednesday or something. And, and we started doing twice a week mm -hmm. from there through the month of, of, of uh, March. Mm -hmm. And then towards the, the end of March, one of our um, elders, our assistant pastor, he actually came down with coronavirus. Wow. And through that, we ended up praying three days a week. Mm. And, um, and he and his, his um, illness, he, he went, he, so he got healed from the coronavirus. Um, however, he did not, he succumbed some kind of uh, infection afterwards. It was like an infection at the hospital. His body was just too weak to, to, to fight it, to fight it. Um, but we ba we literally had moments where we saw death be called away from the mm. prayer that we were lifting up, Jeez. and he was feeling them. He told us, "Wow, I'm I'm literally feel so." I mean, his I mean his family his family was telling us, you know, they they, they were like, "Look, y'all, we were feeling the prayers because." Because they told us he was going to be gone in 24 hours. They told us he was going to, he, they said this weekend was his last weekend. I mean, I couldn't tell you the amount of calls that we got um, that called us all together in prayer because of this. And I, I just want to just say that we, we, we weren't prepared, but we were, we, God got us prepared. Right. Praying through fasting. Then we incorporated fasting and, and giving, start talking about that. And all those areas, we had just like, because we, wow. our faith is already up because right. of, we've seen and experienced. And so it's been, it, it, it has been a challenge. Um, of course, uh, again, when you, when you, when you come back down to earth and you have to deal with the issues, you know, well, Pastor, they say it's such and such. And this person did, I had to deal with all those. I had to deal with people calling me and saying, Hey, I don't agree with you doing this, you mm -hmm. know? Um, uh, and, you know, dealing with the, the old, older generation that wanted something, they didn't understand why we were doing things the way we were. Why, why do they need to get a computer? Why do they need, you know, <laughs> why do we have to do Facebook and, 
And then the older people, I mean, the younger people's, you know, they, they, they like doing stuff, but they're like, well, why do we always got to pray? You know, why? right, right, <laughs> you know? right. So I, I got it from all, all over. Angles. <laughs> yeah, well, why does so look? Why does so and so have to pray? Why can't so and so pray? And I, I mean, you get so many opinions, but when uh, the the one thing I learned is you got to listen to the voice of the Lord. Yes, because He will not fail you. He would not have you going any way that you're not supposed to. Um, and and this whole experience has has been me. Just listen. It's all praise to God. You yeah. Know, all the, all, I mean, we do at our church. We have monthly church meetings since this happened, and we do the the uh, insights from the Facebook and everything, and and the social media showing us how and you know how many new people we have impressions and all. And yeah. I'm like, look, this is God. This yeah. this is God leading, and and a lot of you have been sharing and and liking and all these other things and and spreading. This is what we're supposed to be doing. You know, yeah. so. We need to be praising God over this, but He He definitely prepared us. I love that. He I love that. Prepared. That's and it's so important that you have to like heed God's voice in this season because yeah. you don't only He knows what's going to what's going to take place. He knows because He's seen. Oh all God. God. He literally seen this. <laughs> right. He's seen this coming, and for hey. your um, for your leader to go ahead and start the transition early uh, with you implementing your vision that speaks volumes because. Um, yeah not a lot of people will pour into you like that and tell you like, Hey, go ahead and get started on X, Y, and Z because you know, they may have heard from the Lord, but at the same time I've heard your vision. It was like, okay, your vision could actually help <laughs> for what, what is coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been in situations where, you know, where the Lord has given me something and I'll go and take it to my leader and, and it just goes left. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, I mean, I, I really do um, applaud yeah. that um, aspect because I think that is um, 100%, you know, awesome because when you have that spiritual backing, you know, yeah. that kind of gives you an extra shot in the arm to do what you're doing. Of mm -hmm. course, you know, God's Holy Spirit and, and his presence and everything, in right. you, you know, gives you the, uh, the affirmation, but it's nothing like having that earthly affirmation from your leader to do some of those things. So, yeah. That's awesome. So... I know um, we we cover like I guess a lot of these questions are going to run into each other. <laughs> That's right, and and I could be honest with you. I this is going to it's going to be uh, off the cuff because I, I I saw your email, but I didn't realize the the questions underneath. So yeah, yeah I'm I'm just flowing. I'm just yeah, flowing. and that's how and that's how I wanted to go. I wanted to be okay. Flow. Okay, so, cool. Um, so you you mentioned like you know everything that's going on right now. So um, what's your? I, I would go ahead and ask like, what's your why? You know, what's your purpose, you know, for doing this behind um, everything? I know, of course, it's the Holy Spirit, but, you know, with you just stepping into this role and learning everything that you're learning, you know, it has to be something that's um, actually keeping you and pushing you to continue, um, even though you're, you know, facing a lot of adversity or, or maybe on, on all angles. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, what's what's keeping you motivated? What's keeping you going? I, yeah, honestly, I would, I would say... Um family mm. um, and the generation to come good um, I, I really I really just have a, a drive for for this generation that's coming up yeah uh, and and I want us to the one who are here now to to start really getting into the, the word of God and into it because there's there is so much going on around this world mm -hmm. and it ain't getting better I can tell you that, and and Christ is soon to come, and we've got to make sure that this generation that is coming up is prepared. They they are prepared, and so we we focus a lot too at our church. We are we have a strong youth ministry, mm -hmm. um, and I I wanted to make sure that we had the right leader in place to cover our youth to make sure that they're they're like really eyes on and focused on our yeah. youth, um, <clears throat> and not busy with other things because this is so important to us it, it, you know we have our families and we we've been attracting families because of that because they see oh wow you guys actually have a good youth program spending time with the kids and and every all the kids know each other um, because when i grew up that that was really key when, when i was growing up we were a small church but we had like a bajillion kids like it was like oh kids you know how, you know how it is yep. uh, parents ain't believe in birth control you know <laughs> <laughs> all, that, 
growing up in the 80s, the 70s, 80s, you was going to hell, so they didn't know. So, um, so we, so they, they, I mean, we, we had so many kids, but it was, it, I still feel, I see why, um, they kept pressing because you have to have the church establishment for this next generation coming up. Yeah. Because they're, they, the enemy wants to destroy the church it, and have them to have no kind of connection, no way to fellowship to, or come together. But we, that, that's my push now. Like we have to establish this church the way God wants it so that when, as we get draw into <clears throat> closer into the coming of the Lord and, yeah. and these things started happening that are spoken in, in revelation, the book of revelation. Mm -hmm. Um, and these seals start breaking. These kids need to be fortified and know, and they need to have the anointing, the, the anointing of Joel too. So, so that they know that they are God's chosen, that yeah. the spirit of the Lord will call, come and fall down on them that they should prophesy and, and, and they shall have, they know that they're going to have dreams and visions and they, you know, they know these things are here to come and they know the word of the Lord. So, um, that's, that's my main, uh, my, my main drive, um, is the family. The second is the institution, which is some of what I put in there, the institution of the yeah. church to make sure that, that we have something to come together to. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, so, so that we, my, my main, my last drive, um, and it, I've been seeing it is drawing people in that mm. don't know Christ mm. as growing up as a, a PK and you, you know, you see it cause you, you, it sounds like your family is, is really in, in into the uh, church too. And then yeah. into, so <laughs> it's like, it's hard to, for you to imagine that someone does not know Christ and right. not, not connected to a church, doesn't know who Jesus is, haven't, don't know about baptism. Right. Um, and we, you know, I thank God because we, we are our newest member. Um, she was like, Oh, this is my first, you know, church. And I, and it just like, it made me just, <laughs> it just made me so excited. Like I was, right. I, my wife was like, calm down, calm down. you know, and I'm, like, I'm, I'm really excited. We get to like, this is what it's about. I don't, I, I love for people who know Christ to, to join our church, but I, I much rather, I much more want yeah. uh, people who don't know Christ uh, want to know who this Jesus is, yeah. you know? And man, how could you imagine you, <laughs> how I much know. you pour into them, you know? And it, it's like, you, it, it, because you get so hung up. A lot of people, and, I, and that's why I love one faith, they get caught up with, well, you know, the Bible says such and such and, and think it's a, uh, argument debate it's, and it's like no 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 we're just trying to teach them about relationships so that god yeah. can lead them and and they can walk in the ways of the lord and and they can receive the word of god yes, um, exactly. not my word all right <laughs> yeah. the word of god, not all that <laughs> the word of god. exactly <laughs> exactly so it, it it was just so refreshing um and it was in that that i realized wow this is this is a motivation for me like i need yeah. more people like this to keep me to keep my drive going yeah i mean that's 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 awesome because i i did campus ministry for a number of years um mm -hmm. that's actually how I, I got into the the last church that i was at um yeah. through campus ministry um and then up till last year well up till before we um, moved down here i was um, one of the campus ministers at um, nc state um for our church and we would hold bible studies every single wednesday night and just pouring into college students you know to me yeah that was very important because I, I've been to college. I'm pretty sure you have too, but um, you know, being in that college environment, you know, it's very tricky. It's very different. You know, you have people that have different opinions, different lifestyles, different everything. And it's learning yeah. how to navigate through all of that. And mm -hmm. in the midst of that, you know, being able to connect with a, a young person who, does, yeah. who doesn't know anything about God or anything about the church and mm -hmm. to actually pour into that. I understand your excitement because when we would have new people, to come to the Bible studies and whatnot, I would be super excited. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'd be like, what in the world is going on? Like, I'm just too excited because it's uh, whenever you have the opportunity to um, lead someone in Christ um, mm -hmm. in any aspect of the um, of their life, you know, whether it's with relationships or if it's with they just need help, you know, trying to make it through school or anything like that, or they just need yeah. help understanding, you know, some of the um, the things in the Bible. You know, it's always a blessing. And I believe that for God to entrust you, and I, at the time I was like, for God to entrust me to yeah. be able to do that, you know, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. It's like, you, right. 
You think highly of me because I don't think highly of myself. I know. <laughs> if you think about it, right, um, and the story with the lost sheep, yep. it's like God is is asking you to go out and find the one sheep. So that he can, he and the angels of God can celebrate. Yeah, like he true. asked you to do that. Mm -hmm. It's just wow. That's amazing. I mean, and that's that's really what it's all about. Because if we're going to build up the kingdom of God, you know, mm -hmm. we're not just going to build up the kingdom kingdom of God by reaching out to other Christians. You know, yeah. it's, it takes us going out into the world. There is a whole world of people that don't know the Lord, and that's that's one of the things that I love the most about. Um, campus ministry or just any type of ministry that is doing outreach because yeah. you know with, even in this season this season is so interesting because with the churches being closed and you know we're in this new season where we have to reach out to people via yeah. um you know instagram facebook zoom you know yeah. it has allowed us to reach the lost you know in a new way in a new it's way, like people, you know, they go outside and they'll go stand on the street corner and preach, um, preach the gospel. Um, or some people will go into the neighborhoods and, you know, share pamphlets and, you know, different things like that. But yeah. a lot of those people aren't receptive of it. But if you, you know, you can connect to your Facebook channel, you can go live and start preaching. You don't know who, who's going to listen to it. And <laughs> as soon as they listen to it, you know, yeah. it could be filled with the Holy Ghost and they could get saved right then. Yes. You'll never know. But at the same yeah. time, you know, you don't, it's like planting a seed and yeah. it's like watching, watching that seed, you know, mature and nourish and flow throughout its life, lifehood. So yeah. I, I love it. I love it. I love ministry yeah. everything about it. You know, there's, there's just so many people out here and it's like what the Bible says, the, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. You know, I believe that, you know, God is raising up a generation of laborers who will want to go and do this work and get more yes. people, <laughs> bring yeah. them into the kingdom. Yes. Uh, believe that you know using these tools like like you're doing you know yeah. the podcast and all these you know zoom and online and it's <laughs> like you can reach so many people mm -hmm. like that and it's like know? an untapped market like there, <laughs> right. there's a market like it's it's funny because like many people they don't like how certain churches you know that they are on online and do different things like that like elevation church for one of them for an example, that's down here with Pastor Stephen Furtick. You know, mm -hmm. he has a huge ministry, but his ministry is worldwide now because of the fact that they've gone online. They've been online for years, but right. they, they, they do a lot of their stuff online and they're uploading and constantly putting information out there. And yeah. that's what it takes. You know, like I said, yeah. there's like an untapped environment that's out there. Yes. And yes. people have to, <laughs> have to tap in. <laughs> you gotta tap in. You gotta. <laughs> And this is forcing it too. That's why I love exactly. it. Exactly. It's like God forced it. It was like, you know what? You know, if you guys are not gonna do it, I'm just gonna shut it down and force you to do it because uh -huh. know, like this. And it, it, it's funny because we had um there's the 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 younger uh generation um has always at our at our church in the recent years, like three or excuse me, three or four years been, you know, they they open up a social media account, they you know, been trying to do stuff, but did not have the church's support. Yeah. Excuse me, but um, after all this happened, it, it, was, it made it a little easier. The fact that we already had, a pay, you know, a web page, a, a Facebook page, a Twitter, you know, and 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 all we really had to do was just fill it with content, with the right content, yeah. uh, and organize, you know, and and it, that made it just so much easier because because we had people who were already interested in it. Mm -hmm. And they were like just like, just geeked out, like oh oh my god, I get to use it. Okay, all right, okay. So I'm I'm in charge on on, on Sabbath morning, and I'll, I'll get, you know, so <laughs> they were all, you know, they just all geeked out about it. The yeah. fact that they get to participate um, in in our worship and our in the word um, yeah. and spreading the word, you know, of the church and 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 in an effective way that they always have seen that like God has always given them this. And I told them, I said, look, you were all you were doing was just preparing us really. Yeah. I mean, that God was still using you back then, mm -hmm. right? You know, so it's not about, Oh, you know, this, the, the, the previous leadership didn't, didn't, you know, support me, da, 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 but it's, and that's why it's so important when God gives you assignment, mm -hmm. when you're not to abort it, just, it, just press through, press through. That's important. <laughs> press that's through. Important. Cause I was, I was having a conversation last night with one of my cousins and we were talking about that too. And I was just telling her how, you know, with one faith, I don't know where God is taking me with this. I don't know where, what doors or anything may open with this, 
But, mm-hmm. you know, when God gave me the vision for One Faith and when God gave, kind of placed it in my lap to start this ministry, it's like, you know, there are times when I get discouraged because, you know, when you're doing this and you're sharing it and everything on Facebook and, and on social media, you know, you're not getting the, the views and, and likes that you want initially. And I've been in this thing for a month, so it's like, I know it's kind of like everybody like, well, calm down, you got, <laughs> you just getting started. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but, you know I, want, I really want to reach people. Right, exactly. I was, I was, we was having a conversation and I'm like, you know, but at the same time, I was thinking about it and it, God kind of dropped in my spirit um, a message that I heard from Pastor Michael Todd um, of Transformation Church in um, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he was talking about how for years, you know, he did men, uh, youth ministry. He did a lot of different ministries. He did a lot of different things where, you know, he, you know, I won't say he didn't see the value in it at the time, but at the time he kind of was like, you know, God, why am I doing this? You know, why am I, you know, putting all my energy and effort into this? And it was like, if he didn't do that then, it wouldn't have manifested into what he's doing right now. And yeah. that's what it's all about, you know, with, whether it's just one faith or whether it's for any young person that's out there and that's listening and they want to do something with their life, you know, if you start now with what God has given you, like if he's giving you a vision to do, you know, maybe go outside and clean up and tell everybody about Jesus, you know, right. start with that because you don't know what it will manifest into, you know, what connections it may lead to, what people you may come across. Yes. You know, with, with this, I I wanted to reach out to a lot of different pastors, a lot of different preachers. And and honestly, when I put the post out there, I didn't think that I was going to get a lot of response, but I've received an overwhelming response <laughs> from pastors and, and leaders and people like, yeah, we would love to talk. And I'm like, well, awesome. Like, well, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we it's, it's one of those things where when God gives you something, you have to give it your all. Um, and with exactly with like with the young people and it, and that's what keeps young people in the church when they have something to do, when they have something they can put their hands on, um, that's exciting to them because, you know, you can give a young person a, a task to preach a sermon or something like that. If they're not a preacher and they'll just clam up at it. Cause they're like, eh, that's not me. But you know, if they're doing something that they're used to, yeah. then you can start seeing like the ministry manifest through them. Like if they, you know, Hey, you love social media. You're always on your phone when I'm preaching. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> how about you run, how about you run my social media account for a little bit? You know, let me see what you all about because you generating, you know, you getting a lot of um, buzz on, on social media, but let me see you run this real quick. So you right. can, so I can see how that grows. And then as you see them do it and you see them, you know, kind of learning some things, you know, then you'll see, Oh, they, they actually do have some type of ministry. They do actually have some type of purpose in them. So, yeah. You know, it's all about the leadership. <laughs> yeah, leaders, you know, really lead during this season. But and you it's know, a very interesting season. You know, um, I see your question too about how can someone find their purpose in God and, and in life. Yeah. Um, and God has been just when when my wife and I, um, and I, and I got to bring her in because she's we she's my she's my covert co-pastor <laughs> she's, like, I gotta come. she's more than you help me <laughs> my help me she really is and, and um and i told her i said look uh we got to do this together you know yeah. and what god gave us uh we when we took over um uh the range and and when my when my uh former pastor bishop now uh said you know go forth we at the beginning of the month we said hey we want to meet with every member. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course we were small enough where we could do it. We <laughs> every member and we want to um we want to talk to you uh just about our vision. Um and one of the main one of the, the, the key things we spoke to them about is you know what gifts talents do you have that you can give to the ministry. Mm. And it's important for people to to think about that because uh like you were saying uh god so many so many times there you know you, we know the gifts of the spirit and everybody's like oh man that's deep oh man. <laughs> but if you look at what you do on a day-to-day basis that give you joy yeah um man god like me i i went from uh my, my first job was at checkers right mm-hmm. <laughs> And then I got a job in the government working in the office mm-hmm. and people may be like, Oh gosh, office, but I really liked it. I, I, was like, <laughs> I, I like, you know, just like 
put putting papers together and you know and 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 doing memos and writing stuff up and you know and mm -hmm. I, I was a clerk um a clerk for the one of the the, uh, the seniors and I was just like you know keeping the calendar and I was like oh I like organized you know just right. organizing things and so and so that then in turn and look at today you know as a pastor that's one of the main things that you need to be successful is organized yeah. <laughs> and have and have things together in place and and meet know how to run meetings and you know all that administrative uh um all those administrative skills mm -hmm. and so that's why i i really think people should focus on when you when you talk about what can i do for god god has already equipped you yeah he's already equipped you and many times you're doing those things in a secular world i mean for your your jobs for your you know um and you're you're doing those things outside of the church mm -hmm. so god has already equipped you with those talents um and and you're looking at them as talents but they really do fall under the gifts of the spirit right you know they they are in there um, and they're baked in there and, and God can use those things and perfect them for his glory. So don't think that I, I can't do anything. Think about what talents do I have? What things do I do well? You know, um, I, I like your example, dude, man, I, I do like being on social media. Um, and I, I do a lot of posts and I can like, I know how to do some arts. I know how to engage with people and get them to respond to posts. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you need to be on our social media team, you right. know, <laughs> hold something up once a week, you know, food for thought so we can get some conversation going, you know, exactly. um, and, and that, that type of thing. So we, we did that. And, uh, one, we got a lot of good, positive, uh, input and feedback from the, the church. They really liked the fact that we wanted to sit down with them yeah. and to talk with them and, and to know what, who they were as a person, mm -hmm. uh, and, and where and what needs they had from the church, you know, of the church. What what did they need? Um, and so we were able to pour into them. They poured into us, and it, it was amazing. Now we know going forward. Hey, if I need um, someone to speak on uh, finances, oh, remember brother so and so? They they work at this place, and and they they already were talking about how they can use finance to uh, help you know, the, the church grow and, and everything. So, you know, they're, they're in a place where they can speak on finances and they know the word of God. Mm -hmm. So bam, let's get them to do a session on, you know, right. so it, it's that type of thing, you know, uh, where, where you really have to look at your gifts and talents, uh, because, uh, you can, you can really be discouraged when you look at the word of God and, and, and you think, you know, I got to, prophesy you know i got you know i, I gotta and, preach i gotta teach i gotta, I gotta yeah. be a prophet and, so. <laughs> right right it's like no the church is more remember the institution has to stand and yep. and in order for that to happen we need those natural gifts and talents and to to move those into the body of christ so mm -hmm. that we can grow together spiritually and right. use them for, for the work of the lord yeah that's that's key um and what you guys did that's that's really powerful because you don't really hear a lot of pastors you know taking that time to you know reach out to their congregation and meet with every single member personally right. and say hey what can the church do for you or hey what what can you know maybe what can you do for the church or, right. or how can we help in this season um and it's very interesting that you said that because it, it goes into your one of your three pillars you know fellowship you know yeah that fellowship aspect is key. You know, you want people to listen to you. You want people to, to buy into your ministry. You want people to, to I don't want to say do what you <laughs> want them to do, but if you want them to be encouraged about what you're doing um, and excited about your ministry, you have to connect with them. And yes. those connections are key because even as a pastor, um, I'm sure you, you're seeing it. Like, you know, those connections are weighing, are, are paying off um, oh, yeah. in, in big ways because you're able to, Hey, well, I know brother so-and-so, brother Steve, he, he knows finances, you know, he can help me teach this seminar on finances um, during this season of the pandemic where people need to save their money a little bit more than what yep. they're doing. So, you know, all of that play, plays a, a, a awesome um, orchestra or it plays a vital role in what we're doing um, yep. with ministry. So um, let me see, where are we at? 1051. So we have oh, about, <laughs> I know we have about um, nine minutes left, um, and so I guess we're getting ready to close. <laughs> that's, all say. that's my. I was gonna say that's my line. 
<laughs> just one more thing. One more thing. Hey, one more. One more. <laughs> I can't even take a coach at fifteen because this thing will cut off at eleven. Like this thing. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. But, um, so what motive? Well, I'm serious. So what motivates you now to continue? Um, and what is pushing you to persevere? I know you said family is what motivated you to get started and, and to keep going, but what is keeping you going now? Um, even after, you know, everything that we've talked about, you know, what is keeping you pushing forward now? Yeah. I, um, I, people, people, you know, I'm, I'm really, I, 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 I am a, a people person um, mm -hmm. and I have a heart for people. Um, and I just, I, I can't see not going on um, and, and, you know, just leaving people, you know, um, and my wife and I, sometimes we joke around and she's like, she's like, so, so uh, Bishop did this for 40 years. Uh, I mean, basic retirement is 25, right? <laughs> she's like, you know, <laughs> Well, she, she's like, well, I'm just going to get a house in Bahamas. And I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> I said, man, man, we got to be, you know, we got to be here for the people. We got to, you know, we got to make sure that we're doing God's mission. Right. And not leaving people behind. And so she's, she's starting to get it. She wasn't raised in the church. She don't get, you know, right. the long term, the longevity of uh, a pastor or bishop. The, those leadership positions are key um, to keeping the institution together. And not only that, but to making sure that God's will is done for the people in the people's lives that, that he's assigned to you. Yeah. Uh, because when those assignments come, just like we were talking about, he, he chose you to go out and grab these people so that he can celebrate the saving of these souls. Um, and when that, you, there's no stopping, right? <laughs> you know, it's just like, you, you have to, you have to answer the call of the Lord. And so I mess with her too. And I say, look, even when we go to the Bahamas and get our house, <laughs> we're gonna have to be ministering. Right, we're gonna have to preach to somebody. I said, God, God is going to, He's gonna show enough have people come our path, <laughs> and before you know, we're gonna be having Bible study. But she's like, oh no. no. <laughs> yep. uh, so it's it's really people. Good. people. Good, good. I love that. Um, well, let me see. We got about a couple minutes left. So. This is, this is an interesting question. Let's see if you can answer it in, in the time frame. Okay. What um, did you, when, we, when you were called to ministry, did you answer right away or did you kind of run from it a little bit? So, and if, so, and if, the, if your answer is no, like you didn't answer right away, then why did you ignore the call and what prompted you to eventually, um, you know, walk into your calling? Yeah, so um, we a couple of months before um, our our bishop talked to me and, and my wife, we had went to a conference and um, a prophetic conference, and and the woman we were talking to, uh, she she had said that you know God is is going to first she 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 uh, told me that what did she say God is going to use you. Um, to build things and not buildings, but people. And, and he is taking you to a season where you're going to be building. Um, and then she told my wife that you are going to be mother of many. Well, so <laughs> naturally we, so I mean, we're trying to sit there and, and this is why you need to pray after you get a prophetic word. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sitting there like, oh, she's talking about my new, because I had just started a new job and, and I'm literally building an organization at my new job. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is about my job. Oh, yeah, I got that. You know, I'm just praying God send me more people so I can have people in place and we could do business. So I'm, I'm thinking that. And then um, my, my wife, she's like, oh, Lord, I'm going to be pregnant. Uh. <laughs> she's like, uh. <laughs> And so, and so we, we, we just went on our way and then I got called and uh, probably a couple weeks later uh, from Bishop uh, and he, and he's talking to the ministers and he's like, Hey, you know, God is really uh, pressing on me. We, we, um, I'm looking for someone to step up, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then he started talking to me. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm looking at the word and, 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 and the prophetic word and I'm, I'm like, Oh man. Um, and to be honest with you, I did not want the, I didn't, I didn't want it. 
I'm, uh, <laughs> and I, because I knew the people and I knew if I wanted, to, if I were to do something, I would start fresh. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but I answered uh, because of the, not only, uh, you know, I could see where the Lord was leading, but I answered to be obedient to God mm. because I, I, I really began to see that this was the Lord's doing yeah. and at, I don't want to be a Jonah. I don't want to, you know, I don't, I, 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 there's no, no sense of running, you right. know, calling that God has for you. Um, and then what happened was God began to start putting things together for me to make it smooth. Yeah. Um, I could not say, you know, not run. I couldn't run. All right. Yeah, it was kind of hard when you yeah. <laughs> at the church and the bishop was right there. <laughs> right, exactly. I couldn't run. I couldn't run. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So I won't take up too much more of your time. Um, I love this conversation. Great. I love you. Um, yeah, I love you too, brother. What you guys are doing. I love the ministry. Um, in any way, I will definitely support. Um, one of the things that uh, I guess one of the last questions that I'll ask is, you know, where can people find you and connect with your ministry? Yeah, so they can connect with us on Facebook. Uh, we're on Facebook. We stream every Saturday uh, at 11 o'clock and, and 1 p.m. Uh, we have our teaching uh, on Thursday nights. Um, we have uh, prayer on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Powerful. We've been experiencing God moving. We have it on Zoom. Um, so we, we have the call up information on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So you can find us at Facebook on uh, 7dpc.com uh, after the Facebook. Um, and also we're on Instagram, 7dpc. Um, if you <clears throat> look on uh, on the web, we're on www.7dpc.org. And all our information is all there too as well. Uh, we are with the pandemic, we are transforming and, and forming. So we are updating things. Just stay tuned to us. The, the main activities are on Facebook, uh, but we invite you to come and join us and let us love on you a little bit. All right. <laughs> while, you, while we all shut down and everything, you know, let us right. love on you. <laughs> exactly. All right, exactly. So I, like I, said, I appreciate this time. I thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Um, thank and thank you for, um, you know, just being who you are, being a great, awesome individual. Um, you know, I believe that God is definitely going to continue to grow your ministry. He's going to continue to use you. And I definitely um, believe that God is, um, has called you and equipped you for such a time as this, you know, just so that he can pull out everything that he's poured into you. Um, and I believe that, you know, great things are coming for you and your wife. Greater things are coming for you and your wife. And I'm just going to continue to speak, you know, nothing but blessings and positivity your way. Um, I'll definitely be praying for you and your wife and your ministry. Um, and I'll definitely, you know, be praying that, you know, you guys continue to uphold the banner of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. people in. So I love it. I love yeah. it. So, Thank you. I love one faith. You guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Awesome. I love I love the vision. Um, and that's what really made me respond really quickly. I said, oh, man, this is, we got to get together. We have yeah. to, you know. <laughs> it's key because, yeah. like, the, the vision is, you know, we, we're all divided in some unique way, whether it's, you know, denominations or uh, different interpretations or whatnot. But mm -hmm. what is key is that we all fall under the same umbrella as that we love and worship Jesus Christ. Yes. So whatever noise that may be in the way, you know, my my thing is just to eliminate the noise and let's just, you know, talk about Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's it. That's what matters. That's what matters the most because at the end of the day, when we die and go to heaven or if you live your life and you end up going to hell, you know, uh -huh. the only yeah. thing Jesus wants to know is, hey, did you know me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. The question that he is going to, um, the question that God is going to ask Jesus is, did you know him? And so yes. it's, none of the other stuff matters, so. Amen. Yeah. So, Pastor, I appreciate you for taking this time. Um, I will um, reach out to you to connect with you, uh, give you my information. Um, yes, please. Stay connected and, and all that good stuff. So, Awesome, man. Right, it, man. It was good. All good. Definitely. definitely. All right. Love you, brother. I can't for the next time. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> awesome. Oh, well, have a good one. Tell your wife to say hey. And, um, I will. And all my love to your family. All right. All right. Love all right. you, man. Please. Okay. Thank you.